Tired, weary, frustrated? What would you be doing if you weren't raising children alone? What's stopping you from living your best life now? On Solo Moms Talk, I discuss with solo mothers the challenges you face raising children alone. So if you're a working solo mom dealing with independent children, insensitive bosses, weight and health issues, or even debt collectors, join us as we discover your path to get and stay healthy, increase your income, and live with joy and purpose. In this battle of life, it's hard to keep your head above the water. So win this fight. <laughs> My guest today is Florian Fritz, and we're going to talk about money and personal finance today. Welcome, Florian. Hey, thank you for inviting me, Jen. Sure, thanks. So we have a topic that applies to everyone. But before we delve into that, can you tell us about Florian? Absolutely. I'm yeah, from a money teacher from Vienna, Austria. And I started in the financial world 18 years ago in 2003 as a financial advisor. And I used to do that for a couple of years. And in 2008, in the last financial crisis, I decided that I didn't like how the financial industry is treating their clients, meaning the clients take all the risk and they pay all the fees and the banks and investment companies make all the money. So I wanted to do that better. I wanted to find a way that how to create wealth, whether markets are going up or down or sideways or just crazy. And I started to learn from some of the greatest trainers in the world. I traveled from Singapore to Phoenix, from South Africa, Johannesburg to London. So all over the world to learn from some of the greatest people like Kiyosaki and his rich dad advisors or some investment fund people, lots of different trainers. And okay. after working with a real estate company for a while where I made the money to pay for all these trips <laughs> and I tested what I learned, which worked pretty well. Now, it's two years ago, I started teaching people how they can take their finances in their own hands so they don't need financial advisors and bankers for them. Okay. All right. Sounds interesting. I love a traveler. <laughs> All right. So before we delve into your specific, you know, how you specifically show us how to manage money, can you tell us why is money probably the most common c commodity, if you want to call it commodity. I know it's not, but if you want to call it that, why is it such a mystery? I mean, we handle it every day. So why is it such a mystery? Well, because we don't learn about it. We get all the things we do learn about it are wrong, basically wrong, right? What we hear from our parents, media, grandparents, whatever school is you have to work hard for money. And it doesn't grow on mm -hmm. trees. And it's the root of all evil and all these things. Now, if if that was true, that you have to work hard for money, all those hardworking people should be rich, right? That would be the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Your experience, are they? <laughs> nope, not at no. all. Most of them are broke. So obviously there's something wrong with this belief, but we still teach it to our kids. Hmm. Um, and that's why it becomes such a mystery, because what we learned is actually the opposite from the truth. Okay. All right. That's a good answer. So what can we do then? I mean, how can the ordinary person just get better at managing their money? Well, first of all, understanding this fact that what you learned about money is probably wrong. And start self reprogramming yourself and say, okay, if money, if working, if just working hard is not it, what, what is it? What works? And the Rockefeller, mm -hmm. it's better to take one day a month to think about your money than to work the whole month for it. So mm -hmm. sit down and think about your money. Okay. How am I making money now? Does it work very well? How else could I make money? What, what might work better? What are rich people doing? Okay. How are they making money? So that's where you start with starting to think differently and to educate yourself how money actually works. Okay. That makes sense. All right. And 
taking it from there, we we hear the term a lot, financial freedom. Mm. What does that mean and how do we create that for ourselves? What it means, I've got this sign here always right beside my computer. This way you can see it. Financial freedom is as soon as your passive income is higher than your expenses. Mm, okay. Every month. Very simple, right? As mm -hmm. soon as money comes in without you working for it or without you exchanging your time for it, enough money to cover your monthly expenses, that's then you're financial free because you don't need that job anymore. Mm. How do you achieve it? Well, there's lots of different ways of creating passive income. Uh, number one is investing it and getting a return on your investments, interest or growth in value or any type of return you can get from your investment You can or rent if you invest in real estate or creating some value like writing a book, recording some music, writing some software, creating an app today. Everybody's got a smartphone. Invent an app that people use every day and you'll make a lot of money with it without okay. you working because... You just put that piece of software, the app in the app store, people downloading it, you get money. So the main idea is instead of you sweating for money, is letting your money sweat for you. Yay. So instead of you working hard for money, make your money work hard for you. Uh, exactly that. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. And how did you become a money teacher? How did that happen? Well, that happened by... Me thinking, okay, what do you do? <laughs> uh, I was working uh, in, in the financial industry all the time. And somehow on the, on that trip of, of learning more, I met a trainer who's training trainers. And yeah, there I suddenly found that I could actually be teaching instead of selling financial products, which I liked a lot better. Mm. Because if I just sell a financial product, then... Yeah, that might work for that person or it might not. If I actually teach them how to find the right products for their situation, how to handle money, how to think about money, then they don't depend on me. They can actually go out and become financially free by themselves. And I think I like that idea a lot better than just giving them a product that's good, mainly good for the industry because that's what most products are designed for. Yeah, it makes sense, you know, so it, it goes with the, with the saying, teach a man how to fish instead of just handing him a fish. And having been in the financial sales myself, I know easy it is for someone to change their mind after you walk out the door. <laughs> after they sign and give you a check, they change their mind the next day because, yes, maybe they understand what they're buying, but they don't understand how it works for them or how it benefits them. You know, they may just see you as a salesperson earning a commission. So okay. I, I like what you've decided to do and educate us in how money works, one, and number two, how to make it work for us. And, you know, it's a shame that, you know, I worked on Wall Street. I know a lot of very smart people who have no clue about personal finance. And I mean, people with MIT degrees, <laughs> they don't have any idea about personal finance. So we need people like you to teach us. And we know that debt is one of those things that keep a lot of us from having financial freedom. Can you address debt and how we can navigate the, the debt mindset, you know, I got to have, I got to have, I got to have, so I need to borrow, I need to borrow, I need to borrow because I don't have enough money <laughs> to buy it. So can you address that debt mindset and how it keeps us from being financially free? Absolutely. Let's start with rule number one, or the easiest rule. If you fall, just follow that and nothing else, you'll probably become at least financially well off is spend less than you earn and invest the difference. Mm. So don't go into debt, spend less than you earn and invest the difference. Okay. Let's assume you already are in debt. What do you do? Well, pay it off, obviously, if it's bad debt. But I advise, depending, you have to look at the interest that you're paying. What I personally, I had a business partner, bad business partner, somewhere in between. When things were going too easy, I started another business, didn't take care of it. The guy bankrupted the company and suddenly I was half a million dollar in debt. Mm. Now, I didn't say, okay, all the money I have now is going into paying off that debt. I say, I can, I will invest as much as I can and make the returns I get 
pay the debt for me. So I still make mm -hmm. my money work and use my income, my re investment income to pay off the debt, which makes it a lot easier because you're not paying it yourself. Somebody else is paying it for you. So yeah. if you check if you're, if you're paying on your credit card, if you're paying 17 or 20%, obviously you got to work on, on pay that off first. But if you can have your debt at 5% or something or, le or, or less, then it's more interesting actually to make your money work and pay the debt off with, with that, with your income and the mindset, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I get that you, that you mentioned, well, think about it. Every time you buy something that you, every time you borrow money to buy something, you're actually robbing your future self. You can't spend the money in the future. And you, on top of that, you'll have to pay interest. So next year, you yourself can pay, can buy not, not only the amount that you just spent, but actually a lot more because of the interest. Mm -hmm. So stop robbing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But then what you just said about, you know, investing and if you're in the position, use that money, the earnings to pay off your debt goes against what someone like Dave Ramsey teaches. Dave Ramsey said, put, put everything except the money you can use to buy rice and beans to eat, put everything in debt. And then, then you invest. But I prefer what you say, because if let's say you owe, you owe a hundred thousand, I want to have this discussion. You owe a hundred thousand dollars and your income, you're not paying that down. You can't pay that down unless you're chunking it. Right. <laughs> But at the same time, if it takes you 10 years to pay that off, you're 60 years old, you're 70 and you have no money saved. So it makes sense what you're saying that you try to do them together. I mean, even if it's a small amount, right? You save even if it's a small amount, right? Absolutely. Make your money work for yeah. you. Use the compound effect, which is so powerful that most of us can cannot imagine how much money you can make just by saving a little bit every month, getting a good return on it, not 0.00, .00 whatever the bank account is offering. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Learn how to get a good return of 10% or, or more. And then the compound effect will, will help you immensely to pay off your debts. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. And I know you say you teach people how to save and invest and teach people about money. Solomon's Talk was designed to curate the stories of solo moms globally. As a facilitator of this platform, I aim to create a peaceful environment where you can share your heart, feel loved, and get the advice you need. So if this sounds like you, why not RSVP for our next virtual meetup? The link is below. It's where you can retreat from the chaos of your life so you can recharge, connect with other moms, and get answers to your burning questions. Remember, you're not alone and you don't have to parent in silence. So tell us how you help. How do you help us? What service do you offer? And if you have any products, you could talk about those too. We, well, we start with, uh, with pillar number one. I have my, my company is called the Money Hero Academy. Okay. And I teach the three superpowers of the money hero, mm -hmm. which are the money mindset, money management, and money making. Mm. And we start with the money mindset because as long as you think that money is bad, you can never become rich because your subconscious will protect you. You don't want to be a bad person, right? Right. So we start with that. And I have a free seven day attracting money challenge where every day people get two or three tasks to actually find out how their money mindset is right now and then reprogram it, improve it. And hmm. from there I go into, a, I offer a program where we work on money management, implement money management systems, I work on a very simple investment strategy that everyone can do with an hour a month and still get returns of 15 to 20% a year. Oh. I like that. And I like that you start with mindset because mindset is everything, right? <laughs> it's yes. why we can't finish what we start because we don't start with the right mindset. So I like that. Ah, huh. three pillars. Okay. And how can we get in touch with you? The easiest thing is to join my Facebook group, the 
Money Hero. So Facebook slash groups slash Money Hero. That's free. And I share okay. lots of tools, tips, techniques in there. In there, you can get, I have it, Money Hero Dream Roadmap, 12 Steps to Create Your Financial yeah. Freedom. You'll find that in there. Okay. Lots of other resources. So just go there and there's all my contact details in there. And, and you can ask questions and get answers and all that for free. Hello, Solar Moms. Do you want an easy and proven way to experience better mood and less anxiety? Even if you think you're too busy with work and family responsibilities, you owe it to yourself to take care of your mental health. Join my easy five-day gratitude journaling challenge. Studies show that writing down what you're grateful for increase positivity improve your mood and help you sleep better sleep better better sleep oh my goodness but that's only the beginning give yourself the gift of better mental health learn how you can incorporate gratitude journaling into your life without added stress or overwhelm click the link below to sign up for this challenge now and get a free 100 page gratitude journal printable just for signing up. Join the challenge today because your mental health is too important to ignore. Okay, well, we'll put a link in the show notes so people can join your Facebook group. Oh, so what is Florian grateful for today? What I'm grateful for today, well, that has doesn't have much to do with, with money, actually. You know, there's a war going on only 500 kilometers from where I am right now. And mm. my wife is from the Ukraine. Uh-huh. And we were able to take in a friend of hers with, with her son and who who's stay with us. And today I got the promise of, of a kindergarten space for, for the son. So yeah. the, the, the helpfulness of people around here to offer support is amazing. And that's what I'm most grateful for at the moment. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for opening your home to someone who is in need because I'm sure that's a great need right now. So thank you for that. And thank you for sharing that. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so as you know, our audience are solo moms. Audience is, you know, we're solo moms. And one of the things, one of the struggles we face sometimes is money, lack of money, not enough money. And which if we looked at it closely, maybe that's not really the real truth, but do you have one piece of advice for a solo mom regarding their money and their money mindset? Yes. I very often hear, I don't have any money to manage. And I understand that it's especially difficult for solo moms. That's why they always think I don't have any money to manage. I will start once I have it, which will never happen. Even if, if you earn more, there's a statistic that middle class and poorer people, for every $100 they make more, they actually in increase their expenses by 137 mm. So it waiting doesn't work. You have It's like tally, saying, I'm going to go to the gym once I've lost some weight. That's not the way it works. <laughs> Makes sense. First, you start managing your money. And even if you have very little, let's say I'm I'm sure you can save at least a dollar a month and put it aside. And next month you do $2 and the next month you do $4. And you will not notice that you have less money at the end of the month. Because there's this thing called a Parkinson's law that says the de demand for something will always match its supply. Mm. You know that from time. If you have three days for a project, it will take you three days. If you give yourself three weeks, it will take the whole three weeks, right? So if you have more, it will expand. If you have more money, you're, you'll spend it. Unless you implement a system where you take something away at the beginning of the month and say, okay, 10% of my money, however little that is, I'm putting aside and make it work for me. Mm. That statistic that you quote, it's, that's very devastating to anyone's pocketbook, but especially for those who don't have enough in their mind to begin with. And 
it, it goes to prove this, this quote that I like to quote by Tony Robbins, where focus goes, energy flows. So if, if you're, if you want to spend those extra money, you know, I know people who get bonus every year or tax return refund and they, before they get it, their focus is on what to buy. Yeah. Right. With that money. <laughs> yeah. So if we could change that focus to, okay, maybe I'll put a half in a mutual fund or whatever, then in 10 years, that focus would shift. Yeah. Yeah. My focus at the moment, I found this new, new company there is they started in 2020 in the cannabis business. And you can basically buy one plant and they will grow it for you, harvest it and sell the product to a pharma company that produces some medicinal stuff and one of those plans really? uh, and all the service around is f around 58 dollars and it gives you a huge return about 40 to 50 percent return in in three months and so now i'm thinking if i get any money how many plans can i buy <laughs> <laughs> then i will uh, three months later i can spend the returns and still keep the money yeah that sounds interesting, except for where cannabis is illegal. So. <laughs> no, that, that, that's not a problem. It's a Dutch company and they're growing this, their plants where it's legal and where the climate is good. And then they're selling it to pharma companies in countries where it's legal. And they sell the products in countries where it's legal. It doesn't matter for you. They never deliver the stuff to your doorstep. Mm, okay. Well, that's an interesting concept. I've been born Jamaican. I really support the use of cannabis in, you know, in our health challenges. But for someone listening, I think, you know, I hope they seek legal advice before they, before they, they you know, invest in something like this, especially if you're American, you know. Say. It's not financial <laughs> advice. This is a possibility. It can be something different as well. Think of yes. what could I invest that money in? Find something that you like, buy that investment, and then later you sp just spend the returns and keep the money. Yeah, yeah, but it makes sense. And I agree. And thank you very much for, you know, because sometimes we don't really break it down to the actual steps, you know, or a good example of, we just say, well, invest in the market or buy Bitcoin. But that one specific is something that somebody could take steps on, right? Or ask question about. Absolutely. Invest yeah. in the market, invest in Bitcoin, all good ideas, but first learn what you're doing. Yes. Well, because yes. most people who just buy Bitcoin will lose in the end. Yeah, they use it to buy pizza. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Florian, for coming and talking to me today. And this is an interesting topic that I don't think we talk about it, but we don't educate about it enough. So thank you very much for coming and talking to me today. Yeah, Anything right. else? It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And yeah, follow rule number one, spend less than you earn and invest the difference. Yes. Thank you very much. And you can ask questions and get answers and all that for free. Okay, well, we'll put the link in the show notes so people that can join your Facebook group. Oh, so what is Florian grateful for today? What I'm grateful for today, well, that has doesn't have much to do with, with money, actually. You know, there's a war going on only 500 kilometers from where I am right now. And mm. my wife is from the Ukraine. Uh -huh. And we were able to take in a friend of hers with, with her son and who's, who's stay with us. And today I got the promise of, of a kindergarten space for, for the sun. So yeah. the, the, the helpfulness of people around here to offer support is amazing. And that's what I'm most grateful for at the moment. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for opening your home to someone who is in need, because I'm sure that's a great need right now. So thank you for that. And thank you for sharing that. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so as you know, our audience are solo moms. Audience is, you know, we're solo moms. And one of the things, one of the struggles we face sometimes 
is money, lack of money, not enough money. And which if we looked at it closely, maybe that's not really the real truth. But do you have one piece of advice for a solo mom regarding their money and their money mindset? Yes. I very often hear, I don't have any money to manage. And I understand that it's especially difficult for solo moms. That's why they always think I don't have any money to manage. I will start once I have it, which will never happen. Even if, if you earn more, there's a statistic that middle-class and poorer people for every hundred dollars, they make more. They actually ex increase their expenses by 137. Mm. So it waiting doesn't work. You have, it's like telling, saying, I'm going to go to the gym once I've lost some weight. That's not the way it works. <laughs> Makes sense. First you start managing your money. And even if you have very little, let's say I'm, I'm sure you can save at least a dollar a month, I put it aside and next month you do $2 and the next month you do $4 and you will not notice that you have less money at the end of the month. Because there's this thing called a Parkinson's law that says the de demand for something will always match its supply. Mm. You know that from time. If you have three days for a project, it will take you three days. If you give yourself three weeks, it will take the whole three weeks. Right. So if you have more, it will expand. If you have more money, you're, you will spend it. Unless you implement a system where you take something away at the beginning of the month and say, okay, 10% of my money, however little that is, I'm putting aside and make it work for me. Mm. That statistic that you quote, it's, that's very devastating to anyone's pocketbook, but especially for those who don't have enough in their mind to begin with. And it, it goes to prove this, this quote that I like to quote by Tony Robbins, where focus goes, energy flows. So if, if you're, if you want to spend those extra money, you know, I know people who get bonus every year or tax return refund, and they, before they get it, their focus is on what to buy. Right. With that money. <laughs> yeah. So if we could change that focus to, okay, maybe I'll put a half in a mutual fund or whatever, then in 10 years, that focus would shift. Yeah. Yeah. My focus at the moment, I found this new, new company there is they started in 2020 in the cannabis business. And you can basically buy one plant and they will grow it for you, harvest it and sell the product to a pharma company that produces some medicinal stuff. And one of those plants really? uh, and all the service around is f around $58. And it gives you a huge return, about 40 to 50% return in, in three months. And so now I'm thinking if I get any money, how many plants can I buy? <laughs> Then I will, you know, three months later, I can spend the returns and still keep the money. Yeah, that sounds interesting, except for where cannabis is illegal. So. No, that's, that's, that's not a problem. It's a Dutch company and they're growing this, the plants where it's legal and where the climate is good. And then they're selling it to pharma companies in countries where it's legal. And they sell the products in countries where it's legal. It doesn't matter for you. They never deliver the stuff to your doorstep. Mm, okay. Well, that's an interesting concept. I've been born Jamaican. I really support the use of cannabis in, you know, in our health challenges. But if for someone listening, I think, you know, I hope they seek legal advice before they, before they, they, you know, invest in something like this, especially if you're American, you know, say. <laughs> financial advice this is a possibility. It can be something different as well. Think of yes. what could I invest that money in? Find something that you like, buy that investment, and then later you sp just spend the returns and keep the money. Yeah, yeah, but it makes sense. And I agree. And thank you very much for, you know, because sometimes we don't really break it down to the actual steps or a good example of, we just say, well, invest in the market or buy Bitcoin. But that one specific 
is something that somebody could take steps on, right? Or ask question about. Absolutely. Invest yeah. in the market, invest in Bitcoin, all good ideas, but first learn what you're doing. Yes. Well, because yes. most people who just buy Bitcoin will lose in the end. Yeah, they use it to buy pizza. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Florian, for coming and talking to me today. And this is an interesting topic that I don't think we talk about it, but we don't educate about it enough. So thank you very much for coming and talking to me today. Yeah, Anything right. else? It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And yeah, follow rule number one, spend less than you earn and invest the difference. Yes, thank you very much. I'm excited to share that Solomon's Talk is now on YouTube. Check out these interviews on our new channel, Solomon's Talk TV. There you will actually see the interaction between myself and my guests. You will also find bite-sized clips of daily inspiration to help you manage the struggles of everyday life. So click Solomon's Talk TV below to watch now.